Ah, oh, and it's happening. Oh man, I'm, am I supposed to announce these? That's something I'm supposed to do, yeah. No stream announcement. Let me just hit him with the good old Control C and a good old Control V. Oh, and it automatically records. Hmm. Local man talks to himself because he's bored. I can't wait. Ah. I just have to like, there we go. Bot, yay! I love when my bots work properly. That's so awesome. Oh, there's zero plan. There's zero plan for anything to be happening right now. There's zero expectations. Cause it's 9 p.m. and I'm bored. My inspiration for starting the stream was that I've done literally nothing today. Well, I guess that's not true. I washed dishes and watered some plants. But then I just like, I haven't, I literally have just been like existent for the other part of the day. And then I went into my room, fell asleep on my keyboard for an hour, and I'm like, I'm bored. So now it's streaming time. Because I don't know if I want to like do anything, but I figure I can just like stand here and to talk at a screen because <laughs> was I doing anything better with my time? No. So, you know, that's, that's really, that's the story of how we got here. Like, <laughs> I don't know why I decided, oh yeah, 9 p.m., that's like, that's like streaming time. Neum, welcome, Owl. Welcome. Neum, indeed. No question marks needed. It's Neumann time. See, I, um, I, I like, I said that I might, hold on, everything be like, oh yeah, it does that sometimes. I will, I'm holding. I guess I don't really need to hold, because like, it's, I'm not lagging. Like the stream is. In real life, I'm completely fine. So I'm like, I'm chilling. I said, I said, you know, I'll probably stream Ruina. I, to specifically you. I didn't say that to anybody else. And here I am. Not doing that. The category's just chatting. Because that is all I'm doing. It's like nobody's nobody who was like watching me play Ruina is gonna like be here, you know. Like, so I'm gonna just be chilling. That's not why. It's because I don't really feel like it at the moment. You know, like oh, I don't want to think right now. Newm, awesome. All right, no question mark this time. This one's a statement. See, if I'm gonna be talking, oh man, I think I know just the place to be talking at. And I'm not appearing. Oh, there we go. There's me. Oh, I love that guy. That guy's me. Oh, see, isn't this, isn't this lovely? There should be rain sounds and also music. No, there's not actually, actually not music, I lied. Oh, I didn't add music to this scene because I decided I could play whatever music I wanted to on this scene. And that would be better. So can we, let me just, uh, I'm gonna just go do that. Can I, you know, can we just pull up a, a nice thing here? Let me, I have non-copyright music for stream. Oh, there we, there we go. This is, see, this is what I'm here for. 
Yes, this is um, non-copyright coffee house jazz, calm jazz music, relaxing music, relax music meditation. I really, you know, it really hit the nail on the head with that one. I think it works mighty fine, personally. I don't know how loud it is. Probably not loud. No, I he I'm hearing it fine. Probably louder than the rain, which is, you know, expected. It should be. You know? It's probably working as intended. Be good. All right, that's what you like to hear. The audio on my computer is wonky because everything has to be adjusted from like its default audio down to like something really low. Or in your case, Owl, something really high. You're always at like 200% or something. Because that is the only way it is possible for you to be heard on stream apparently. So some things, some things require more adjusting than is typically required. Remember when I just like, when I, I, what, when was it? Was it when I tried to stream after I got back from my trip where the audio was all, you know, wonky and there was a ton of static? Ugh. That was annoying. Like... I hadn't changed anything, because I was literally gone. But no. Decided it wanted to be really, really annoying. Probably fine, yeah. I love when things randomly break for no reason. Yay! Wow. Anyway, how's your day been? I've been, like, doing nothing. I woke up this morning, ear infection. And so the, in, the incredible ability of the ear infection is to make you feel uncomfortable while performing literally any action in the known universe. And so when you feel uncomfortable doing literally anything, you want to not do literally anything. And so I, like, didn't do anything. But, you know, I, then I then I then was like, I have to do something. So I washed the dishes and I watered flowers. And then I fell asleep on my keyboard for an hour. Which I already said all three of those things on this stream. So there's a there's a little bit of a there's a little bit of a repeat just a couple minutes later. So, yeah, you know, nothing bad happened. Because the bad thing happened several days ago when I got an ear infection. So, you know, it's been, it's definitely been one of the days of my life. That's really the most praise it gets. It happened. And now, streaming. I don't know why, but I am. How, yeah, yeah, well, I hope your infection gets better. Thank you. It's a definitely, I don't, it, there's no, I can't, it, it hasn't started to get better because I've only had the drops for like two days. And your infections are annoying. How has your day been to anybody who is here? The, the, uh, by the way, the, the reason I, turned on stream I think you know apart from being I wouldn't go into a stream with no idea of what I'm doing it was mostly to like talk about streaming other games because like the stream suggestion thing um, it's been going brr sounds sounds about the same here I hope that's a like a good burr and not like a bad burr but basically the, the stream suggestion like chat thing was you know having actual dialogue in it which is abnormal as i you know have only streamed ruina and lobotomy corporation and so i was just gonna you know be like oh hey what things oh what things are games that are fun to stream and 
people would be interested in actually seeing. I've already said, you know, on the Discord some of the things that I wanted to do. Oh, oh. Oh, it's being used right now. Wonder who's wonder who could possibly be using that. Get a couple of I, I plan on it. It would be because I like I looked at it. I was like, oh, this looks fun, and then I watched a, a review before going live, which is something I rarely, rarely ever do for a game. Which, you know, call that stupid if, <laughs> if you want to. I like to know the minimum amount for literally uh, anything at all. Um, because otherwise, if I know the things that are happening, it's like, what's the, why am I here? But Cult of Lamb didn't look like a game where I could get, like, a story spoiler or something, like, in a review. Or, like, be told something that I didn't want to know. So I was like, oh, I'll do it. Because I didn't, I haven't heard anyone say anything specific about the game. I've only heard them say this game's good. Which, if that's just the general consensus from literally everyone, the game's probably good. I just wanted to know what is this game. And then um, I heard the word roguelike, and I was like, okay, I probably like it because here, let me go through. I'm gonna read the names of every single roguelike I have here. Uh, You've got Domino, that counts as a roguelike. We've got Darkest Dungeon, that, I think more so Darkest Dungeon 2 is a roguelike. We have um, Enter the Gungeon, let's see here, Gunfire Reborn, uh, you know, let's go ahead. Lobotomy Corporation technically counts as a roguelike. We've got Noida, we've got Risk of Rain, Risk of Rain 2, Spelunky, Spelunky 2. Uh, yeah, I, I play roguelikes. And they're fun. Not all of them. Not all of them are fun. Risk of Rain 1, not a fan. Risk of Rain 2, pretty fun with friends. Otherwise, it can get a little bit boring. Because it just, you know, can go on forever. Enter the Gungeon. Amazing rock. Hades, I don't have it on Steam, so I didn't list it. Hades is like the the greatest roguelike I've ever played in my life. Dead Cells, I also don't own it on Steam. I have it on Xbox great game i suck at it enter the gungeon i have 100 percent it because it's so awesome uh yeah like H hades is so amazing i can't even i can't even you haven't if 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 you haven't played the game hades you need to play the game hades Everything about that game is awesome. Go look at like the character art for any character, or and listen to like the music for any point in the game. It's uh, it's great. Looks cool. That's because it is. That's because it is. Oh man, the the songs that like Eurydice and Orpheus sing, oh, they're so good. Then also the people who. Uh, Made that game. What are they called? Let me look up uh, 80s. No. No, I want the... No, 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 no. Yeah, see, I can get the game. It just it filled in, like, something else. 80s Town? Who, what? Literally what? No, what? Now I have to know. Now I have to know. It's a musical. Okay. That would be why. No, 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 no. Show me the... Show me, you know, publishing. Alright? That's what I want to see. Is, okay. Okay. Basically, the game I wanted to say was Bastion. Is the is the game that I played previously to Hades that was made by the same people. Bastion, excellent. Has a great narrator, much like Hades. If you count the one, if you if you count the like the disembodied voice you hear as a narrator, because it doesn't narrate everything. Bastion's narrator narrates literally every single action and possible combination of like weapons and items you can have, which is why it's amazing. Because they have, like, a reactive narrator. And even the music in that one's good. <laughs> because, you know, it also has Darren working on it. And, you know, they know what they're doing. I guess it is... Okay. What is... What's the song I'm thinking of? From Hades. There's In the Blood, which is great. Not the song I'm thinking of. 
I could say that for literally any other song in the game, actually. Lament of Orpheus is the best song in Hades, in my personal opinion. But then there's Good Riddance, Hymn of Zagreus. Wow, oh, it's, it's awesome. Good Riddance is another. I, okay, I could just, I couldn't, you know, I don't even have to name the songs in that game. Any song that has vocals is, like, amazing in that game. I'm to keep using the artwork here for just chatting, but I, it's here, and it's fun. I'm glad it's seeing you. So yeah, it's uh, it has its 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 whole own scene called the talking table. Here, since it's just me and chat, uh, that makes that makes your name literally unreadable. Here, that's just that that there. Ah. Uh. See, now, now it's a proper talk. Now we're truly chatting. Well then. Uh, uh, all caps. <laughs> we're truly... This scares me. You can't, you can't just all caps well then me. What was the well then for? Oh yeah, another thing about this scene is that I, you know, I have to have my own, like, table. We've discussed that before. The tables have a, a bite taken out of it now. I had to go fix that. There's your table jump scare. So it's really fun. What do you think you stream other Ruina? Like, it's 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 not like I feel like I must only stream Ruina. It's that I legitimately enjoy Ruina, and really want to keep playing it. But I'm playing it on stream, so I feel like I have to only play it on stream. But I don't feel like I only have to stream that if I'm playing. But I also do because I feel like I move on to something else. I'm gonna be like picking, oh, you know, which one am I wanting to do right now, and then eventually I could forget one. So like literally anything else that we've listed, unlike the uh, the, the chat, yeah. Um, I don't think I would stream. Uh, don't starve together because that would require like knowing what I'm doing, and I feel like that would just be a whole ton of like losing progress. The game's fun. The game was only fun because I was playing it with somebody who knew literally how to do anything in the game, and so the dynamic of me being stupid and wanting to like tell them they're wrong at this okay so basically i play the character who's the strongest character in the game which is like the one like viking girl and then my friend likes to play it safe and play the game by the book because he knows everything and so he would tell me oh you can't fight that thing don't go fight them and then i would come back to him with like marble armor a football helmet and like the meat club having murdered everything in existence but i can't do that if it's just me or me and someone else who doesn't know what they're doing. I'd say probably getting the smallest of things, basically like two to four games. Yeah. It's just the problem with um, Runa and, you know, a great many other games uh, is that they're really long because people like to make games that are enjoyable and have really good stories and to get a good story across, it sometimes requires a great deal of hours. Let's go see... Uh, Ruin a length main story an average of 134 hours Story and extras 145 completion is 178 All play styles generally up to about 148 hours. I beat uh, Here, let me see lobotomy corp Length um, I want to see 100%. How long does it take to 100%? Yeah, completionist, 122 hours. I beat it in 80. I got 100% seed of light in 80 hours. So sometimes I'm fast. Ruina, not feeling like I'm fast. So it could be well over. So the thing is, it just takes up a slot for a while. That doesn't mean you can't do it you know, the list of other things. I think Terraria would be great because it's been a long time since I've played it. Potential for multiplayer. There's mods, which I've never used because 
I have like played the game on Xbox for my entire life. Um, I just need to, like good controller bindings on computer, which I don't know why it's so hard to do because it's literally on the Xbox, and so my Xbox controller should work. <sighs> I'm not skilled enough to play um, big mods like Calamity. Um, I also can barely use a computer, uh, a keyboard. So if I was playing the normal game with a keyboard, we'd be stuck for a while on like King Slime. So I have to, I must use the controller, otherwise nothing will get done. So that limits modding potential, but not by a ton, because only the gigantic mods need keybinds and stuff. One th one thing that's one thing that's annoying with Terraria is that I play Summoner, which is by far the weakest class in the game. Um, and then they locked the best summoning weapon behind like the hardest fight in the game, which is like Morning. Um, let me see what her name is. Uh, you see, we b behind the Morning variant of Empress of Light. So Empress of Light's fight, I believe, is like a uh, bullet hell. And if you get hit once, you die instantly because you're fighting her in the morning. But that's the only way to get the best summoning weapon. It's called a Terra Prisma, I think, and it looks very pretty. Never done Terraria. I've never done class in Terraria. What do you think of it? It's it's really fun because so all of the um, armors and items in the game have their own uh, like um, like, have their own set bonuses and stuff, so you can have different sets or headgears specifically that will boost a different type of damage. So there's, I believe, range damage, magic damage, melee damage, and summoning damage, and I believe it's just those four types. And so melee is the riskiest because you have to be up in the enemy's face, but it can do the most damage. Magic and range are both extremely effective. Summoning lags behind by a fair margin, but now they've added whips to the game. So, so you can use whips to apply uh, debuffs to enemies and have your summons focus on them specifically, which they used to not have. And there's only like five summoning weapons in the game, but now there's more. And then also, like every single item can add its own buff. So like summoners, there's mostly items where you, you gain an additional summon slot, or that's mostly it actually, because summoners get zero love. Um, but... I like them because I have, I love having my funny little entourage of angry little people behind me to attack any enemies that get in my way. And like in my, like in, in the games like Minecraft, you know, I really don't like building because I suck at it. In Terraria, I'm pretty decent. So it's fun. Terraria is a game I really, really like. And summoning, play, playing as summoner helps when playing Terraria. Be, when you're building in Terraria because things don't kill you yeah friends attack exactly and another thing about being a summoner if you get a copy of like a great summoning weapon every single class in the game immediately has one summoning slot so you can take your summoning weapon pass it to your friends and they have one little buddy and then you have like you know your 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 whole gang let me see max summons terraria you can, you can get the summoning table early on if you're lucky from the dungeon. You can have 11 summons at a time. You can have 11 funny little pals with you that will kill on sight. And the Terra Prisma is really pretty because it puts a lot of glowing swords behind you that change color. And so I would like to have 11 of those. Because then the, there would be dazzling lights that would make me go ooh and ah. Which would be quite enjoyable, I think. new building in minecraft so i i would but i'm bad at it i can't enjoy creative mode because i'm awful at building and so i get most of my enjoyment in minecraft from playing it with friends and being their little worker drone to go get them supplies to do things because that is because they want to do building and i want to not do building but i also really want to see pretty things get built Everyone seems to say I'm great at it. Dude, there's some people who are absolutely absurd. There's one person who's pretty dang good at building. That I know. That I'm that I'm that I'm friends with. They uh you know them as the president of our school. Um 
I assume you know the president of our school anyway. They're pretty good. They're pretty good at building. They're I'm pretty sure pretty sure they're playing Minecraft right now and they're building something. So you know. And when I play by the way next year tell them I said hi, I shall. I wonder how well his presidency will go. I think if he misses five days, he uh, is not allowed to be president anymore, which is a bit of a shame. But I mean, that'll make him actually, that'll make him, you know, miss less days, so. You know, I'm just, I'm saying maybe, it'll, maybe it'll be good for him, you know. Show up to school. This is, this is a command from me to everyone. Go to school because it's fun. This is a fact. I love I love school. School's a great place. Cuz you can you can meet people and you know be smart on occasion. I'm really good at being smart, uh specifically on occasion. Like why like, you know, it's fun can be there can be you know real annoyances with school we're not this is not the school stream though no more school back to things i can talk about because i can't talk about school because i'm literally like it's it's summer i've got about a month left until it's not how many <laughs> we've got like 20 days to load up Pixelmon World to see my builds with mods. Oh, Pixelmon. I never got to play Pixelmon. Um, so, many, many a year ago, uh, my eldest brother had Minecraft on his uh, like old laptop, which, by the way, was an awful laptop. It was an Alienware one, which is how you know it's awful. Um, he had Minecraft on it. Uh, I believe I believe it was the Alienware laptop they had Minecraft on. There is some other computers in our house at the time. But my other brother, who's also older than me, because both of them are, uh, installed Pixelmon um, without permission to my brother's computer. And Pixelmon, for whatever reason, never ever wanted to detach from that computer. It just stuck itself in, never wanted to leave. You could not do anything without there being Pixelmon. And that is the experience I know of Pixelmon. It's just that it latched onto my brother's computer and would not go away. Like there's some there's some incredible Minecraft mods out there. And I like playing Minecraft. Survival anyway. But I'm not good at building. I'll still do it. But I can't build you a pretty house. I can build you like a fun little campsite, you know, a little tent that I will sleep in while everyone else gets their warm cabins. This one was pretty fun. Anyway, back to Terraria. And I wonder if there's like a Pixelmon like mod for uh, Terraria. I doubt it, simply because it's 2D and I feel like it'd be weirder to format. Um, I think someone made a mod that turns Terraria into like a turn based game. I think someone did that. I'm not entirely sure. But like, that just, that just sounds so slow, but it's so funny that someone did that. Just take what can be like the most hectic fight with something like Empress of Light or Mood Lord and turn it into just like the still screens of a uh, <laughs> turn based RPG. There's Pokemon plushy mods for the Starbound. There, there needs to be more plushy mods for literally everything in existence, I think. You can't go wrong with that. It's like, oh, this is a cute plushy. On my, uh, my trip. I, I, I mean, is there a difference between, like, a plushie and a stuffed animal? Or can you use the names interchangeably? I feel like a plushie is generally doesn't have as much fluff or fur on it as a stuffed animal would. This isn't really... Yeah, I don't feel like this is important. Anyway, I went to, like, Joshua Tree, and I got this, like, little uh, barn owl one. Because I was like, oh, I went in Rome. And I look up plushies, and I see Sonic Among Us plushie. Okay, this was a mistake. Um, rechangeable. Let me let me see. Uh, plushie versus stuffed animal. Like I wouldn't call any plushie a stuffed animal. Like if someone, if someone were to show me like a Pokemon 
plush? I wouldn't call it a stuffed animal. Because that's not a real animal. I'd call it a plush. I think I think all stuffed animals are plushes, but not all plushes are stuffed animals. I feel. You know, it's like squares and rectangles. Every square is a rectangle, but not every rectangle is a square. It's effectively it. Like, I, I'm seeing this giant, like, this, this fat Kirby plush. I wouldn't call it a stuffed animal. That's just Kirby. Maybe if Kirby inhaled an animal, then I could consider it a stuffed animal. But in the present state of Kirby, no. Why is there just more among us? <laughs> I, didn't, I didn't want more, like... It's just like a front-facing, like, among us that it's like staring into your soul. I'm not used to Among Us looking at the camera. It's not okay. Corbo, indeed. Among Us should not stare at the camera. I, li I like how, uh, you know, a couple messages back is anyway back to Terraria, and then it was the, the topic was not picked up. What, what, what about Terraria? Because I can I can talk about any subject of Terraria. Probably. With decent accuracy. I'm building that game. Ah, oh. because okay, I wasn't I I didn't have a ton of fun building in that game because the most effective thing you can do and there's no reason not to do it was to just have one big square building with every house as small as possible that the game will legally let you get away with. How do you feel about its entirety? Absolutely amazing. And I'm gonna finish the thing I was saying, and before I go into other things, you yeah, like the most effective thing you could get with is a box house, where every house has the minimum requirements. You need um you need a background wall, a table, a chair, and lighting, and it has to be a certain size. The size is basically like um two blocks more width than you can reach, and like a block more height than you than you can reach. I believe is effectively the requirements of it all. And then just have that repeat until you can fit every single villager into a house. And that was that used to be how it was. But then they implemented the happiness system, where people will feel happier with certain other villagers around them and will get uncomfortable and angry if there are too many or too few people around them. And also they have their preferred biomes as well. And so you have to, and uh, happiness affects shop prices. So there's like neutral where everything's normal and there's happy where it's lower or they can get angry and the prices will be absolutely absurd and your wallet will be crying. And so will you because you will literally not be able to farm enough to get literally anything you want. So then you have to travel across the world, putting specific people in specific houses in such a way that they will not die to the enemies in that environment. And some of them like to live underground, by the way, for some reason. Then you have to put them with the specific people. Some people will have their happiness locked at a specific point until you get to later in the game where you can bring over the people that you would now have unlocked to make them be happy there. And then you also, when people are happy enough, you get a pylon, and the pylons you teleport along to whichever biome that pylon is placed in, assuming the people there are happy. So it gave you a reason to spread out and do all these buildings. And so every, like, village I had, instead of it just being these stupid little box houses, was like, everyone had their own house. It was all thematic to whichever biome they were in. And it was really pretty. And then I got sidetracked by a different game and never finished it. And never finished that world. It was like a solo summoner playthrough. And it was going so well. I forget. I, I don't even remember where I was. <laughs> but this is, this is why I go one game at a time, typically. <sighs> But, ah, oh, Terraria is so good. I love that game. Like, I need to, let me, let me pull up, let me pull up something. I literally just opened another new tab of Google when I already have, like, four ones that are literally blank because I just kept opening them to, like, say things, and then I just got sidetracked by what I was saying and never searched up anything. So there's another uh, empty tab of Google because I need them. Um... I don't know what I'm saying. Uh, I need I need something I need something to go off of here. Mm. 
I just wish I wish there was more summons. Yeah, I need to see what uh what summons there are now because it's been a minute. And they have like 1.4, and I think they're they're making another update for like Labor of Love. Unless that update already came out, they're just making another one, even though they said 1.4 was like Journey's End, so it's supposed to be the final one besides bug patches. But then immediately they did a collab with Don't Starve and added a new type of world where it has like the Don't Starve sort of like filter over the game, like the sepia filter, I think is what it's called. Let me see if I'm, uh, am I right? Yeah, the sepia filter over the entire game and then it adds like food you have to eat and it has its own like unique enemies and stuff. So uh, immediately they decided, oh yeah, we said there was a final update. No, not really. And now they're already working on another, another update that's so big that one of the developers is like, I'm, I don't know if we're making like 1.4.9 or just like 1.5 right now. Because they love their game, and it shows. Because the game's actually immaculate in every way. You know, like the lunar event? Here, let me... I need to grab a picture of this for myself. Because I can't show these, because now we're no longer in a Photoshop document. This is its own scene. You want to know how awesome the lunar event is? Because I was just thinking about Terraria when I typed in lunar event. I didn't even preface it with lunar event Terraria. I just typed in lunar event, and you know what still appeared? Terraria on the second image, even though lunar events actually happen in real life, because believe it or not, Terraria did not invent the solar system. The lunar event has pretty backgrounds, specifically the purple one. I like the color purple. So, that's, that's, that's really all I wanted to say about that part, is that uh, the backgrounds are pretty... I can make this point about most things in the game. I enjoy the events in Terraria. Okay, the uh, the 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 one at the lunar event. Um, uh, I'm pretty sure after after you defeat the four pillars, which the lunar event is the most annoying event in the game because of how like strong they are. It's really pretty and everything, and it's like fun the first time. But it's like it takes over your whole world until you get them out of the way, and then it hits you with the message impending. Like, you feel like impending doom, and then your entire screen goes black and it shakes, and then like Mr. Cthulhu's top half appears, and he shoots a laser beam out of his chest, and you die. So you know, maybe wait on killing that final pillar. And if I may, you know, if I may, give you a little hint there. What does that like? There's uh, what? There's the pirate invasion. You've got the goblin invasion. I think I just need to look up area events, you know, because there's also this the uh, the snow one in Christmas time that you can summon, and then when you kill this the snow legion, you get uh, Santa Claus, but he can only move in like December. So if he dies, <sighs> yikes. Rain does... Okay, apparently rain counts as event. Oh, because the fish can fly. When it's raining, fish will just be flying around, which is fun. Oh, and when it's raining, zombies wear raincoats, and there's umbrella slimes. Yep. Yep. Oh, and then there's sandstorms. I hate sandstorms, but they're awesome. But I really hate them. Because during a sandstorm, you get something like the angry tumbler, which... uh. If the sandstorm is blowing at you, you will move incredibly slow, and then the angry tumbler will fly and just, like, you know, run into you with such force, you will notice that you have become a donut because there is a hole through you. I hate the blood moon, but what about the tooth you can get? Or the moon charm? Or the funny clown that never, ever spawns in so you can literally never get the banana ring, even though I've been searching for it for my entire life. Like... I went on a, I went on a quest one time. My good friend, the president of the school, likes wanted the banana ring. So I went on a mission. This guy doesn't the clown enemy does not spawn. I wanted to get my friend the banana ring. The clown the clown never ever spawns in like ever. Eventually I got the banana ring, somehow lost it. Never emotionally recovered. It's, it's so sad. Blood Moon is awesome. It's, Blood Moon's really annoying because they, they'll break down your doors and they'll get in your house. <sighs> but conceptually, it's really fun. And it happening every once in a while is fun. You want to know what happened one time? I got, I, got, I got a Blood Moon directly into a solar eclipse, which led directly into a Blood Moon. Because a Blood Moon lasts all night. And then Solar Eclipse is all day and night. 
because someone decided that would be fun. Like, what if we took the Blood Moon, made all of the enemies effectively mini-bosses, and then had it last for double the time? And so they did that. And I want that person fired. You know? I lived with it. Because I couldn't do anything to stop it. Oh, there's bloody tears now on the computer? Oh, they're on console now, too. Okay. So you can um, summon one yourself if you need to farm for something. That would have been helpful several years ago when I wanted to get the funny banana item. The Hemo Goblin is oh, it's a funny enemy. See, uh, there's specific fishing enemies during the Blood Moon, in hard mode anyway. There's like the Bloody Hill, the Hemo Goblin, and the Dread Nautilus. There's the Wandering Eye Fish. They're all so strong. But you can get items from them that I think I'm, I need. I needed them for something. I think one of them gives you a summoning item because they seem to really like locking uh, summoning items behind literally the most annoying possible thing in the game. Because for whatever reason, they're like, oh, the weakest clash in the game, let's have them fight the hardest enemies that are literally ever invented by man. And then they do that. Like I, like I said earlier, they just, they really hate summoners. One thing that's fun is uh, if a goblin army ever starts coming to your base when you're going down to fight the wall of flesh even if they arrive when you are pre hard mode because they aren't because you aren't up to them so they aren't technically spawned in or anything you kill the wall of flesh and then guess what it's the game's in hard mode now so you return to the base immediately if there's a hard mode goblin army you're going to die you are not ready for them probably expect people to be in grief to you somewhere yeah but it's a fishing enemy i don't want someone to have to stand there and like babysit me while i fish that's what my summons are for the the wandering eye thing it flies it flies so fast i know from my solo thing like what i had to do i had to get um like a gun with uh icker bullets and i just had to keep the things yellow and hope that they die fast enough to my I don't even know what summon I had at the time. I came here to look for summon weapons, not look at all the events in the game. Right, fishing? Let's go fishing. Fishing. Oh, there's the Old One's Army, which was a Dungeon Defenders 2 collab. Dungeon Defenders 2, that game, I hate it because I played the original Dungeon Defenders. Dungeon Defenders 1, way better. I met a hacker while playing Dungeon Defenders, and so they provided me with this funny little weapon that takes up your entire screen, and when you attack once, it kills literally everything on the map. Including the final boss. That game was awesome. Dungeon Defenders 2? Boring. They did add the uh, Dryad to it, which is cool that there's like a Terraria character into the game and they have voice lines and are like a full 3D model, but it's like the game's bad and you have to paint their behind a paywall. Like every other character in that game besides the main four. Oh, okay, okay, okay. So the Dungeon Defenders 2 collab in Terraria is good. It's a little, a little boring, it's a little hard. You also can't use platforms to build it. I built this whole like straight bridge out of platforms because it's it's more cost effective. You turn one piece of wood into two platforms. Nope, can't build it out of platforms. Got to tear it all down and replace it with wood. It was so cool. Pretty sure someone tried to get me into the second one. <sighs> Play the first one instead. I played the uh, magic guy. I think he's called the apprentice. Dungeon defenders. Let me see here. Okay, but I wrote the judgeon and as opposed to dungeon. Yeah. Dungeon Defenders Wiki, the original Dungeon Defenders. I'm actually literally I'm not getting a Dungeon Defenders Wiki, I'm getting like Dungeon Defenders Wikipedia page. Because apparently I don't apparently this game's not real. Show me the Dungeon Defenders characters. I need to know who I was playing as. Yep, the Apprentice. I was right. This is awesome. Dungeon Defenders 1 has 8 other characters available as DLC? What? Oh, they, wow, that's rude they didn't bring them over to the first one. Still would have played my boy. 
apprentice. Never mind, there's one named Summoner. Actually, probably would have played Summoner then. Okay, back back to Terraria. <laughs> um, one thing that's awesome about Olden's army is that I'm pretty sure all of the things you place down, all the sentries you place down, do summoner damage. And they provide... There is there is one uh, set of armor. So there's the Ballista summon. I like doesn't seem like the game for me. Fair enough. I played it many a year ago. I don't know if I'd still like it as much now, but uh, when I played it then, it was so much fun. <laughs> um, it would probably be too easy now, I think. If I, if I beat it then, you know... Might be a little yawning. Uh, but it was just like a fun like 3D tower defense game. So I, w I was having fun with it. Holden's Army is a little bit of tower defense, which you can't really do because you just sort of need a flat landscape in order to be able to start the event anyway. I think you can only have, I think, an 8 block difference between where your Eternia Crystal is up to where the portals have to spawn in. Um, so you can't really do much dynamicness there. But the Ballista Sentry does a ton of damage, and it has its... There, it, okay, so it comes with four armor sets, and then four... Okay. Anyway, you want to play Terraria on the next stream? I thought you suggested something else a little bit ago. I'm up for either. Truly. Truly, I am. Um, what was I? Uh, okay, the Terraria collab has four armor sets, one for each of the four characters from the first game. Either or, I will let you decide. And by the way, let me say, I believe you were supposed to stream today, alright? That's it, let me, let me say that. Try class and try it? It's Terraria then, it's settled. It's settled, alright? So, by the way, the reason I said you were supposed to stream today is because you know, that's why you're choosing, is because, you know, tomorrow, tomorrow will be like... The real stream. I'll probably stream too, if we're, since we're both playing it. It'll be... Things happen. I, I'm not blaming you for anything. Okay? There was no there was no shade thrown. Intentionally. Intentionally, there was none. What was I... And then there's also a sentry for each one of the classes. And then at different stages of the game, the sentries level up, so you have to buy them again. And the only way you can buy them is with the Fender Medallions. I kind of know to get. But they're effective, and they're fun. I didn't sleep till 3 a.m. again. That's not good. Uh, isn't, it's not your fault that you, that you didn't fall asleep. I did that, too. See, my ear does this funny little thing called be in excruciating pain. So I actually uh, didn't sleep. For a while. And then I woke up and everyone in my house was leaving. And I was like, what's going on? And then I, you know, washed the dishes. The Torch God is an event in Terraria when 100 torches accumulate in a close proximity underground. And then the Torch God shoots fireballs at you from every single torch. And then if you survive the onslaught of fireballs, you gain the Torch God's blessing. And then every torch you place is thematic to the area that you're in, the biome. Which, when you do that, provides torch luck, which lets you get better drops from enemies. <laughs> That's another event in Terraria that I've seamlessly segued from one topic into that into. Uh, I... Hmm? Torch God? I hate Torch God. I was like, surely Torch God can't be too hard. And then, uh, uh, you know, I might have been a little scorched. There may or may not be, let's say, between 500 to 5,000 scorched graves sitting in the underground of a certain Terraria world. You know? Could be one or two. Well, why are you so hyped about Torch God? Because of, like, thematic torches? I will admit, they're awesome. Time to go commit torch god things. <laughs> you will die. Don't. Oh, it's so good, though. Torch god is... Torch god is so fun. I heard someone say they added torch god. I was like, it's gonna be a whole... But shut. My stream, but okay. 
This is no longer a just chatting stream. This is this is now the just silence stream. I'm alive. I'm allowed to talk again. Thanks. Thank you. I have been freed from my prison. My mouth vanished. The lungs evaporated. But now I've got them back. Dude, uh, building. I, I love. I love. I. Ah. Terraria makes me happy. Because I get to, I can build in the game and I can like make things that look pretty. Because I would I like I like to make things that are pretty. I just can't. And but in Terraria, oh man, I can. Maybe I'm clipping that. Oh, it's awesome. You love to see it. I love clips. The Frost Legion. Okay, there's three enemies in the Frost Legion. There's Mr. Stabby, Snowman Gangsta, and Snowballa. I don't know why they made him like the mafia, but those are, they're the only three enemies in it. That's really all I have to say. They don't do anything particularly helpful. Then there's the pirate invasion where you can get the money gun. I hate the pirate captain. Okay. There's special items for playing in master mode. Uh, they range from completely useless to very helpful and decorative by the way if we play in master mode every enemy is going to be way harder but every time you kill a boss you get a pretty golden statue of that boss and it like floats and stuff and it looks really nice i made like this one trophy room with the, one of those big uh there, there's these living trees they're the giant trees that pop up out of the ground i got um yellow paint painted the entire part of the painted the entire top of the tree yellow so it's like this golden tree and then underneath it the uh trunk of the tree slowly turned into like golden blocks and stuff and then it was this whole like big golden like hive thing beneath the tree that i placed all the statues on it was so nice it could have been way better <laughs> it was really impromptu but it was really fun Ash fruit brisk tea is decent. I, uh, I have not had any brisk tea ever. Also, ooh, thank you. Uh, but what I was saying is that I fought the I fought the flying Dutchman. I believe. I think it was fourteen times. So I had fourteen flying Dutchman trophies because you get them from master mode at a one hundred percent chance. <laughs> Power stream delay sometimes gives out. Thank you. Um. I wanted the item called the Black Spot, which is the fastest mount in the game, which they've nerfed so far, and it has internet flight time. Um, I believe it was the fastest mount anyway. But I was going for uh, the Black Spot for a helpful mount. Um, it drops at a 25% chance. I got it after 14 fights. Which, by the way, you only... I believe Flying Dutchman spawned within the last 25% of a pirate invasion, something like that. Um, and you can have like three spawn or so if you only fight them. And so I had to fight through so many part invasions just to get this thing. And it was so annoying. Enough of that, though. You get to the two events that I haven't been before. Pumpkin Moon and Frost Moon. Because I think they go up to wave 20. And at a certain point, I just can't fight three Ice Queens at once. Or the Pump King. Oh, and then there's the Alien event, too. Oh, I've seen the alien event like twice. You have to like kill a really rare enemy and then it'll happen. Let me see. Martian Madness event is a post is a post golem event with an alien theme. You need each other in order to start it. You have to encounter a Martian probe randomly in the outer parts of the surface or space levels of the world. Move into its light. Once the probe detects the player, it needs to leave the screen without being destroyed. One for asking your phone. Also, Yar Har. And once I think about, I've seen them like twice because it's a rare enemy. Pumpkin and like the pumpkin and frost ones, they're fun. Me and our beloved president, 
uh, dedicated like our entire our entire house was a fortress. We had like uh, like towers on the side where you could stand in and you could like fire your guns or put like, the little ballista things out of them. They would shoot outside at the enemies trying to get in. And then we had traps from like every imaginable conceivable place you can get traps. We went into multiple worlds just to break in with our pick saws to the jungle temple and take out every trap. From those temples and then bring them back into that world and set up stuff and it was it, it was never effective because they would simply kill you instead but it was really fun to do i'll go feral over decoration this is not a recent thing whatsoever this was many many a year ago so there's no squad to get into Except for like literally just me. So now we can we get this is now a squad of two. Feral over decoration is so much fun in Terraria because I can do it and it's. Mm. I need to go back on the world sometime and like get pictures of the stuff. I know, but I was still go oh, feral. Yes, as you should. This is the feral stream now. Or wild. Let me see here. So, normally, when I play Terraria, I play on a large world, because there's more world. But, I, my brothers kept trying to convince me, play the small world, play the small world, play the small world. Because it has all the same amount of stuff, but it's smaller, so you can get there without needing to, like, travel for five billion years. So, I don't know if you have a preference... At this point, I don't know, because I've, I'm being yelled at to be like, no, this one's way better. But I wouldn't know, because I haven't tried it. So I wouldn't, you know. Did you picture my Starbound areas? Starbound, I love the art style of Starbound so much. After playing Terraria for so long, I was like, I wish this game was on console. And then, um, it, no, it wasn't. Oh, you grab the mine cards. Yeah, you have... Um, I keep feeling like I'm gonna sneeze. That's why you grab the minecarts, but then you need the, the railing, and I'm not good at the railings. I don't have the patience for it. Our beloved president did so much wiring. It's better because you have more space if you go bigger. Yeah, but whose building is gonna cover a large world? You know, that's wild even for me. But the thing is, if you have a large world with the new happiness system, it provides even more in incentive to do the pylons, all right? And then you won't have to travel anywhere as long as you keep your people happy. So if you aren't a boring looser, you will plan a large world like I've done for millennia, and it will be awesome. Oh, I don't know what you're saying, he he, me too, because I just called people losers. And I doubt that's what you're agreeing to, because that sounds like more of an agreement than like a, I'm offended, you know? I say things out of my brain, my brain will go to mile a minute, and you should know this. I don't know what you he 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 to me too. But that was so awesome that you did. Anyway, <laughs> let me look at those different summons that are in the game. Like I was supposed to do what feels like five years ago. Hmm. <sighs> I'm gonna make a huge base I can span across everywhere with minecarts and I will handle it all. But if you handle it all, then I can't handle any of it. And I want to build. You know, it was so much fun spending forever building up my desert village just for good old crimson to spawn there when i killed the wall of flesh Ugh. i hate it the gorgeous place sunflowers and the corruption corruption was better and more of the wine cards and another thing i was saying was our beloved president would do a lot of wiring and stuff for teleporters and things really tedious but really helpful. I don't have the patience for it whatsoever. I've set up an AFK farm before for one specific summon, that one, uh, uh, the daggers that fly around you, the blade staff, which is dropped by enchanted swords um, on console. Except they're dropped by enchanted swords um, at a uh, like 2% chance. So I set up an AFK farm it would it never worked i hate it i will do it i volunteer all right that'd be so awesome 
I never got the enchanted dagger, so literally I had to like, I went out into the interwebs and I asked someone, please, for the love of literally everything that is existent in this world, I will give you any single item in the game that exists, aside from the sword, aside from this dagger staff, if you can give this to me. And so there's like, I can just give it to you for free. I have a couple. And I'm like, oh, okay, okay, of course, you have several. And so they just gave it to me. And then I, I had it. Because, you know, after um, building a farm for an extremely rare enemy that can fly through the farm, which it was fine for it to fly through the farm. It's just eventually things could go wrong with needing to keep moving. Because you, you have to be jumping. Jumping counts as, you know, moving. And that specific enemy, that specific enchanted sword enemy, will not spawn in if you aren't moving. For, I think, more than 10 seconds, jumping counts as moving. So you get this item, the frog legs, that allow you to hold... I believe it's frog legs that allow you to just simply hold jump to continue jumping. And so you get those, you equip them, you put some, like, a book on your good old A button, and you just jump forever in a little kennel. It has these tracks going towards you, so that when enemies drop stuff, it'll just siphon into you. And that's what I did. And I had a ton of, like, summoning stuff on me, like spores and things that would just automatically kill enemies around me. But I didn't have to do anything. But that enemy just doesn't spawn, and the item barely drops. So after killing well over a hundred, I was like, okay, well, well, clearly I'm not getting this. So I gave up. And this is why I hate Summoner. But on computer, it drops from a boss. So. A much easier to do. You just fight Queen Slime. Go ahead and bring up stream ideas tomorrow. If you're at the volunteer place. I will be. Abigail's flower found on grass placed near tombstones. Which I think that's exclusive specifically to worlds that you do. <laughs> yeah. Man, I'm literally dying right now. Okay. Uh, Abigail's flower and other don't starve items are exclusive. I believe uh, I believe they're exclusive to worlds that use um, the specific seed for that. For, for don't starve, which I believe is if you make the world seed the constant, you'll still get a randomized world. But it will be... Um, it will have everything and the features from Don't Starve. I believe it actually just makes Don't Starve items spawn at a higher rate, actually, as opposed to only being available in them. Then there's the Fitch Staff, which you get uh, from Living Wood Trees, which is like the giant uh, trees that can spawn in. And Journey Mode. Don't play Journey Mode. Boring and weird to just play the game normally. Flink Staff, I've never seen before, because it was never on console, I don't think, until 1.4 came out. Baby, the Slime Staff, you'll never even see. Because it they won't drop. It drops from slimes. Except it's so rare. And you're just not going to see it. But it gives you a little little baby slimes to follow you around. So, you know, if you get it, awesome. Vampire frog. You get from zombie merman. And the wandering eye fish. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So of course you do. Hornets. Imps. Houndiest, shootiest, dropped by deer clops. That's why I haven't seen this before. With the name like Houndiest, shootiest, I really want it. But it's dropped by the deer clops, so I haven't even I haven't done anything with the Don't Starve collab. I, I always anything. What do you what do you always anything with the eyes? I don't know what you mean. I always anything with the eyes. <laughs> that, that didn't express to me what you do. Eyes oh, give me the heebie-jeebies hate. Okay. It was, it, was, it, was, it was either hate or love. Now, I, you know. I haven't seen any, like, eyed creatures in Starbound. I Disembodied eyes aren't exactly, you know, my thing. But I don't think they're meant to be. I don't think that I don't think they're ever meant to make someone feel comfortable. Oh, then you get the whips and stuff. You get you can get the leather whip from the zoologist, and the zoologist. I think the zoologist keeps track of the things you kill and all the creatures you find. So that's cool. 
Zoologist is really cool. I believe this is a Zoologist. It might only be on full moons, or it might be every moon, but they turn into, like, what is it? Is it, like, part wolf or part fox? They're cool. They're one of the newer villagers in the game. And by newer, I mean, like, they came out with 1.4, which is a while ago. But they sell you the first whip in the game, which is the leather whip. And then you can get the snap thorn from, like, jungle stuff, which I hate because the jungle, there's poison and hornets suck. Battle tap. You need bones to do, which means you have to go into the dungeon. So you have to fight Skeletron first to get the third weapon of your class because, oh, uh, man, our summon is uh, summoning awesome. I can just skip past most of these. I can just say what they do. There's a spider one. There's one for, uh, like, the, another type of bat. There's pirates. There's the enchanted dagger. And then my personal favorite staff in the game is the twins. The uh, optic staff. Because it summons one of each twin every single time. So, instead of it being one minion, it's two. And then, because of that, you can have 22 eyeballs flying around you that charge at enemies or shoot lasers, which is really fun to just have a gigantic, like, swarm that will just, like, peck at people until they die. Anything like a rogue class in Terraria? What do you mean by that? What do you mean by rogue? There's range. There's plenty of range. And to me, rogue is, you know, like, sort of... I mean, rogue's like stealthy kind of stuff, but to me, that means more so range. I guess there's, you know, something... A rogue is stealth, effectively. Which you can't, it can't really do in Terraria, unless you have a mod or something. I'm sure there's a rogue class mod, because I think that, that sounds familiar. But it wouldn't be... Since it's from a mod, it could either be way more fleshed out than anything else in the vanilla game, or not. You know, it's kind of a kind of a toss up, but I need I need to know I need more you know specificity on what you mean by rogue class. Fast attack, any class can be fast. Aside from the summoner, um, that dude be the Mordor in games. Well, that that would be helpful because I'm 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 I I play support in games. Any game where it's possible to be like a support, I love playing support. Um. Yeah. Which is why summoning's great <laughs> for me, except doing summoning in a game where I'm playing by myself is not uh, too helpful, but oh, I love the little tiny people following me around hitting things. It's really fun. Um... Oh, there's a Desert Tiger Staff, which has only been on PC until, like, 1.4. The Desert Tiger Staff, as opposed to summoning in multiple uh, enemies, in multiple summons, you get one tiger that increasingly gets more armor and stronger the more times you hit the summon. Anyway, fast attacks. Let me see. That's right, I'll read the classes. There's not, okay, there's not really reading classes. What people mean by classes is specifically going after weapons and armor sets and items that increase range damage, increase melee damage, or increase summoning damage. So, basically, uh, most sets of gear in the game, or at least later on when it comes to um, ore ones, as opposed to, like, armor made out of wood doesn't have special class stuff. Armor made out of ores typically does. And there can be helmets, masks, and hoods, I think? Hoods are for increasing the amount of mana you have, or the amount of magic damage you do. Did I say hood just now? I think I did. Masks increase range damage and speed on occasion, I believe. I doubt it, actually. And then melee ones increase melee damage or melee speed. And so that is effectively what it is. And if you don't do a class, um, like when you pick a class, you can still use weapons of other varieties to get special effects on enemies or something, or for specific situations, like you're not expected to only use melee, but it's meaning in this specific category, you are extremely strong and it is probably the most effective way to play the game because that's how it's made to be done. So when you're playing with a group of friends, you can hit multiple, you know, niches at once to have a better rounded team as opposed to everyone's going to fly at this thing with their like stick and try to beat it to death because they're all melee. You'll have people in the back avoiding attacks more. Some people taking aggro with different stuff, you know? But with mods, you can most certainly get something that's going to be a specific class with skills and things. Like, I'm sure that exists. <laughs> I 
<clears throat> but that is that's basically what it is. Um, if I explain that well. Um. Oh, and then there's armors that have something that come with them. There's two armors that innately have a summon with them, and they're the Stardust armor where you get the Stardust Guardian. Like this, I like too speedy, but attack a lot. Um. I know an item you might like then that you get from uh, expert mode uh, Eye of Cthulhu. His shield, where if you double tap in a direction, you like do a quick, speedy burst. I'm pretty sure that item is something people use for the entirety of the game. Like twin blades, twin blades and fists are the best in Rune Factory. I love them. I use twin blades so much more um, than the uh, fists. But being able to pick up people with the fists, even though it's not effective, it was just fun. But twin blades, I love. I love them. Like, who cares if, some if something's close to you if it's dead already? Because you just go, <laughs> you know? Already out of the way. In, uh, because I was playing Rune Factory 5, which isn't as much my style as 4, because the 3D's all weird and the days are super long and stuff. It just felt, like, kind of disorienting. Which, by the way, any Switch game, if I'm playing on a handheld mode, makes me feel, like, disoriented and kind of dizzy. I must be, like, when I'm playing on the DS, fine. When I'm playing on the Switch, for some reason, having my controls be on the exact same, like, you know, horizontal area as my controller makes me feel really weird. So maybe that's just why. But, like, playing on the DS? Fine. Awesome. Love it. Playing, going from, like, 3D game on, like, my D... Going from, like, 2D top-down game on my DS to, like, this 3D game with a bigger scale being like on the handheld and it's all weird it just is mind-boggling but throwing people in 3d more fun i will say i got the gloves and it's like oh this isn't doing any damage and you pick someone up and you spike them on the ground dead instantly and you can throw them into someone too oh there's feral claws which is used for melee speed oh that's fun Yeet indeed. You just spin around and chuck them somewhere. It's awesome. And I wish two minion slots didn't come from a summoning potion and a bewitching table. Like, just let me have them forever, man. Feral Bite. From some bass and Duke Fisher on. Ugh. Here, what's the, what's the best little summon you can get that's like... Terra Prism is just pretty. The Stardust Dragon is just a, like, there's, there's, uh, like, a worm-type enemies in the game, which, you know, like the worm, but also, like, the Eater of Worlds and stuff, and the Destroyer, where they're just, like, uh, one creature with a ton of segments. There's some pets like that, and it might only be the Stardust Dragon, actually. I don't remember. I think it is actually just the Stardust Dragon. Stardust Dragon, when you summon it, it's just a small dragon, but as you keep hitting the summon, it gets more and more segments to it. So you just have, like, a really long dragon. Plus the Stardust Guardian, if you're using the Stardust Armor. And it just is silly looking. Because it tries to stay close to you like every other pet, except it's so long that it just kind of, like, bends in on itself. Oh, and Wyverns! Wyverns are another segmented creature that terrify me. That just horrify me. Lonk. They can be absurd. Okay, so let's think about it this way. In Terraria, the Wyvern spawns when you are way up in the sky, really high in the world. Now, uh, Terraria, the highest biome in the game is space. And that is like the edge of your world. Gravity gets all wonky and you, you know, you hit the top. That's, the, you know, your funny little atmosphere. And then you just land back down on whatever thing. The Star Dragon before I like them. Yeah, I prefer the non-wormy ones, though. Long Guide looks like he wants to eat me. But the Wyvern, conceptually, like, you just think about some things in the game being real, and you're like, oh man, that's, that's a hor that'd be horrifying. Because you're up in space, you're chilling out on your little skyland, you're hanging out in your fluffy little clouds with all your little minions, um, and then you see 
What's that coming at you from literally the depths of space, the deep, dark, black void? Oh, it's this giant dragon that's about to rip you in half. That's not very fun. I hate the wyvern. If you're up near the top of the screen, where literally the camera stops moving upward, then it can be on you in literally frames. And it's like, oh, oopsie, you're being knocked around by the giant wormy body in low gravity. <laughs> and... <laughs> I, I appreciate them, Rava Heart, followed by the sentence, I had fun murdering them. <laughs> I want a picture of that, just Rava Heart. I, I had fun murdering them. That's awesome. <laughs> I'm gonna, uh, this is a, uh, this is a Windows Shift S moment right here, I think. There we go. That's a that's a fun little picture I'll be keeping. <laughs> that is oh, that is incredible. I have no idea what I was saying. Um big fluffy uh dragon scary because it comes out of space and eats you. I think was really the uh really what I was saying there. What's what's another Terraria thing I can talk about because really I'm, I'm an expertise in the summoning aspect I could do potions more like there's some stuff in this game I could look more into it's it's uh potioning actually getting planters for all the stuff and having a set spot where I can you know get things some for some things uh, potions I'm so good with words you need fish I believe so some fish can provide amazing things for potions but to get the fish, you have to fish in different places, as you would expect. Different biomes, different heights. And there's also a little angler who tells you, go get this specific fish from a specific spot on this day. Fishing can take forever. Fish them. Yes, fish them. With the fishing, it, with the, through the power of fishing, you can build the telephone. I believe you need three items from fishing to get the telephone. The telephone, I believe, uh, gives you every single, like, statistic in the game. It tells you, uh, your height, uh, your exact coordinate on, like, you know, left and right axis, like, west, you know, um, like, east and west, basically. And then, the amount of, like, what enemies are nearby, the amount of enemies nearby, uh, have the rarest enemy nearby, rarest or nearby, and then it also gives you the, the ability to just teleport home. It's like every single uh, specific um, like data item plus a magic mirror in one. And then there's other stuff like that, like the Ankh Shield, where it prevents every single debuff in the game, basically. Except instead of having all those items equipped on you individually, which you literally can't because it's impossible, you roll them up into one. Uh, I think the game is most fun on like master mode because... It gives you access to everything in the game. All the special little items and stuff. Which, sure, the game's harder at literally every point and wants to, like, kill you. But you get fun stuff. You get fun things. Yeah, let me see. Terraria Master Mode. Items, specifically. Let me see what incredible things you can look forward to. Stop giving me ads. I don't want them. Yeah, you can get different pets. You can get slime prints, suspicious eye eater of worms. I think there's a pet for like, is there a pet for like every single boss? Oh, there's a mount for wall of flesh. Dark mage's tome? I don't even know what that is. That's part of the, no, there's a, Sand, there's a sand tank mount. Tr tree, you get the mount from uh, the Halloween event too. There's a, there's a lot of pets and stuff. Okay, so there's a pet for every single pet or mount for every boss, as well as their own uh, relic, which is a golden statue of them. So that's what you can look forward to. Basically, I, I guess there's actually nothing there that's too incredibly helpful. No, that, that can't be it. Cause no, I guess the I guess I'm just thinking of uh, 
black spot has a helpful um uh yeah the black spot which is what summons the pirate ship mount has a helpful item as opposed to simply a mount so i guess yeah i guess it is just mounts and stuff which pets are fun you can have one pet at a time pets are different than summons mounts are also different than summons and there's also town pets which are different than all of those things a town pets just stay in the town as you would imagine i think you could only have one tent per uh blech, one pet per world as opposed to um one per area but i think you can probably fix that with a mod or something but there's like cats and dogs and rabbits i think soon slimes will be in the next update um there's like six different ones let me see terraria town pets town dog that is not that is not every pet i want to see all of them. Town, no, there's a town pet section. Just take me there. There's cats, dogs, and bunnies. Let me, let me see what kinds of cats we got. Do we have like one that's like my cat? Perhaps? I don't think they're subject to the happiness status. Like everyone else is. There's not a cat that looks like my cat. That's so sad. It's not a dog that looks like my dog either. And I don't have a bunny. So I guess I've got no preference here. Let me see. I need to just see like every pet in the game. Is there one I should actively seek out? I shall be right back. I shall be right here. With these pets, let me see. Baby dinosaur, what'd you get from Amber from the Extractinator? Would you need Silton slash Baby Eater? Okay, I get why it's called Baby Eater. It's because it's a baby eater. It doesn't eat babies, though. Like, the baby face monster, that makes sense. Baby Grinch, it's a baby Grinch. Baby Hornet, you know. Are all of these prefaced with baby? Most of them are. Chester? That's actually so awesome that you can get Chester. But like baby eater, you know, next to everything else makes more sense. But like if I, if you just say like baby eater, they're going to think it eats babies, which isn't true. Baby truffle, baby werewolf. That's awesome. Bernie? <laughs> Who's Bernie? You get them from the princess? Oh, they have the princess. You need everyone else in the world. Chester. Chester goes so hard. You get them from deer clops? Companion cube, which you can get from the traveling merchant. See, a funny little thing about the companion cube. If it touches lava, it makes the sound of the cultist dying. And if you keep it in lava for forever, then it makes the moon lord death sound. Which, you know, a little bit scary. Maybe a, perhaps a little terrifying. There's a fennec fox. That's actually awesome. SD. A little star. I've not seen these things before, because I play on console. Yeah, that's, that's probably why. It looks like a Luma. I think it's just supposed to be one. Um, Dynamite Kitten. Which is a cat with a, uh, with just a mining helmet on. Glomer? Who is Glomer? Glomer looks awesome. Glomer's flower? Oh my gosh. There's so many awesome little pets. I love Glomer. The black black cat, Chester, and Glomer might be my favorites. Mini Minotaur, which you get from Tartar Sauce, of course. Big man. Plantero. Propeller Gato. How have I not seen these before? There's a sugar glider, Volt Bunny. That's awesome. That is just Pikachu. Except, you know, a bunny instead of a rat. Hmm, hmm, hmm. Itsy Betsy Mini Prime. Plantera Seed. There's two different Plantera pets. I guess one of them is exclusive to Master Mode, probably, is what it is. Yeah, Master Mode only. Honeybee? The honeybee looks awesome. These are awesome pets. Spider brain, that is that is gross. 
light pets. The flicker wick. Wait, there's so many actually awesome pets in this game that I want. It's worth it just for them. Windows phone and 3DS only. You can just have a whole werewolf as your pet. Wow. Or a zombie. What are these ones? Ugh, I don't like these ones. Alpha Cupid Worm Pet Old Lady and Pet Jerky. Not a fan. Not a fan of those ones. They're weird. Curry Princess, Toy Golem, and Jack-O-Lantern. Wait, these pets can only be quite a massive one. Can be used anywhere? Is there a difference between that and the other ones? Okay, yeah. I think this is not. Why are they listed in different sections? I don't understand. Hmm. And Tasmal Dragon. I'm just straight up talking about things that there's like I can't make appear. This is why it's just chatting. That's the only part that's going on. You know. I want the honeybee pet actually so badly. How often do these drop? I have to know. 25% chance? It's only from Queen Bee, I guess. You can't lock something this adorable behind master mode. That's rude. I love the honeybee. <laughs> the propeller got though is awesome. You can just have a mimic as your pet. I'm going to end up thinking it's a chest. It is not even a joke. Sapling. I remember having the sapling as a pet for a really long time. I go see something. Hmm. What? I mean, I've been. I'm surprised that this has been a topic that has continued for this long. Not specifically pets, but like just a Terraria itself. I need a. I don't even know what I could go on to from here. I could, I could check about other things that I stream, could stream. That is. Forgive me for reading things to myself by going. I don't even know. Okay, 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 okay. Let me... I don't... I am not segueing into something right now. This is awful. Hmm. Right, it's 120... I don't even know what this means anymore. I'm looking at... I'm, I'm looking at some of the stuff on the pets, and I just don't tr truly understand it. Hmm. I'm not doing a good job at talking anymore. This is bad. There's just like more things I can say about Terraria. Now that I can't bounce back off of some stuff. Just, I think it'll be really fun to go through. After doing Ruina for such a long time, I have not lost any amount of joy for Ruina. I have not lost any amount of love. I adore Ruina. <sighs> I really like playing it. Sometimes you're gonna need a break, and I'm sure I'll finish it. Because I love Ruina so much. And I have, there's, like... Okay, the, basically the reason I've been playing Ruina only is because I'm worried about playing something else. And then uh, completely throwing Ruina onto the curb and not playing it. Because I've done this before with other things, and then like that's not other things I've streamed. I haven't lost any game I've streamed because, you know, I've only done Lava Core and Ruina. Um, but I've done that with games that I haven't streamed, like one one of them being my old Terraria world, and so I don't want that to happen again. 
um, having a Chihuahua world that I'll be playing with someone else, which sounds like is going to be the scenario that's happening. It sounds like we're going to be playing Chihuahua with Owl. And having the other game that I play, the Ruina, which is something that is an active topic in the Discord server, I think will be a very good way of having me be able to accurately bounce between both of them reasonably. Because if there's ever a point where I've been playing Chihuahua for too long, there'll be talk of Ruina on the server that'll lead me back into playing that again. And then, if I'm going to be playing Chihuahua with somebody, I wouldn't want to be playing without them, so if they're at a point where they don't feel up to streaming or can't be streaming, I could always go back and do Ruina instead. So I think it's actually going to be a great dynamic, and I think it's going to go really well, and I'm happy about it. So, yeah. Let me go ahead and see here. Um, I like Terraria, there is, like... There is Minecraft. Okay, I'm going to tell you about Minecraft for a moment. Because in most scenarios, I'll be honest, I'm not too much of a Minecraft enjoyer. Alright? The game the game can be fun. The game, But to me, the game can only be fun when I'm playing with other people. Oh, which, you know, is there a big surprise there? It's a sandbox game. What I mean, like, most of the people I see playing Minecraft have, like, legions of people they can play with or doing a ton of mods and the thing that annoys me is that like when you have something like terraria which has tons of stuff added all the time thousands of items can come in and they just come in in huge waves and you have like minecraft where you get a mob vote on one thing you want added in out of three in like a year it's so upsetting so i just i just simply it's not like Minecraft is bad. Minecraft is good. It's just when I see it next to something like Terraria, as opposed to it making Minecraft look duller, it simply makes Terraria shine in a great blinding white light of like pure amazingness. Like here, let me let me let me go over Minecraft. You can see like people speedrunning that game. Okay, no, 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 never mind, never mind. I'm not gonna go that route. I'm gonna say, like, there's there's some armors. There's some armors in that game, in that game on Minecraft. The first one, and weakest, being leather. You'll be wearing the strongest armor in the game, netherite, more often than you'll be found wearing leather armor. This is a fact. Because literally nobody ever wears leather armor. Chainmail armor isn't even something you can get in while well, playing survival. And by get, I mean craft, okay? I suppose you can get it out of, I believe, blacksmith chests, I think you can get it out of, but I know you can get it out of dungeon chests. Those are two armors that you're never going to be wearing, ever. And then also, if you ever get wings, which you will, because you're going to want them, because they're great for moving around, you have to take off your chest plate and replace it with your wings. You have to take off the most armored part, the most, the, the most defense-providing aspect of your armor set, and replace it with something for mobility. Whereas in Terraria, do you just have both? You just you know, have slap both of them on there. I think in Terraria, you know, along with your entire set of armor, you could have on, uh, like, the cloud and a balloon. You could have on, like, the four cloud, the four balloons with, like, the, uh, I guess, I think the max is actually three balloons only, even though you can get four or five. You can have, like, the three balloons with the horseshoe on them. You can have your wings, you can have your hoverboard, you can have your jetpack. You can have, like, you can have so many mobility things on you. You can have your shield for dashing, and you still got your full armor. And then to Minecraft, it's just like, here's your sword, here's your bow, here's your armor. Wear them. But by the way, you can go to the nether, which is much more dangerous than the normal world. You have to be wearing gold. You have to be wearing at least one piece of gold. So you still have to sacrifice something from your armor set to go to somewhere more dangerous, more lethal than the normal world. You have to have less armor on. To get resources to make a new armor that contains gold in its recipe that you will then not be able to use because it is not, in fact, in and of itself gold. In that dimension where you obtained the resource from that is more precious than the gold that the people use. In that dimension. That sentence. It was awful. Basically what I'm saying is, the content is so much better in Terraria, because there's so much more of it, there's so much more of it that is accessible, so much easier, and for a reason. Because it's like, I could go out, I, like, they had to retroactively add a reason to wear leather. And the reason to wear leather is specifically boots only, 
which is the cheapest thing of any armor set to make his boots, because it requires four of that resource, and it's just to walk on powdered snow in one biome without slipping through. Even if I don't, I could solve that by having a shovel and digging myself out. Like, what's the point? And then you've got, like, how many... Does Minecraft has three bosses. It has the... It has the... The, the Elder Guardian, it has the Wither, and it has the Ender Dragon. Now you can defeat an Ender Dragon with like eight beds. What? Oh, except also now they added the Warden, which takes the strongest armor in the game and literally can like instant kill you if you have it on, because that's like awesome. <laughs> like you see, there's some reasons I don't like the game. And those, those are them. Like... But the, the part the part I enjoy is playing with friends and building your own little world. And sad thing is, when there's such little content in the game, your little world is going to go bye-bye very quickly because people are going to get bored of being on that world. The fun part was building the thing. But now that the thing's built, I don't, you, don't, you don't really have much of a reason to be there. You want to make a new world to get a new set of scenery or something. You don't want to have everything encroaching upon the place you've already built, otherwise it's just going to feel cluttered and nonsensical. And you have to go make a new world and start from scratch again. Which I guess is fine if you're only building stuff, but I mean, like, it just kind of gets rid of the content for the rest of the game. Like, what's the- if I'm only here to build, why do I have all these enemies that are just going to get in my way of gathering resources? Then at that point this year, you're going to just play in creative mode instead. But then when you're playing on a creative mode, it just, like, literally is building and it doesn't feel like you're, like, doing anything. Now I'm just complaining. <laughs> Oh, boy. But Terraria? Aw, oh, man. There's a reason to go out and get whatever. Like, with the whole entire happiness system? It just makes sense to go out and do that stuff. And then, parts of the game are locked behind bosses, so there's a reason for progression? Whereas in Terraria, fighting any boss is just because- I mean, not in Terraria. And there's in Minecraft fighting any bosses just because you feel like it? Because there's literally no reason to? There's absolutely zero incentive? Actually, no. There is incentive to fight the... <laughs> you can get, like, one item, one helpful item, the Elytra, from fighting the Ender Dragon, actually. And then you can get a singular star to make a beacon if you are to fight the Wither. Except also, you're going to need um, a ton and ton, a 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 ton of uh, any ore in order to activate that beacon. That's going to provide you two buffs maximum in a small area. Like, what? Why? Why do? I don't, <laughs> I don't see the point. And then what, do you- don't you get just, like, dry sponges from fighting the Ender Guardian? Not Ender Guardian, Elder Guardian. What do you get? Like, you can just go around, like, the outside of that building and break stuff? In order to get, like, gold and things? You can just do that instead. What is- what do they have? That is like, what- what- what reason do they give me to do this? I, I, I need someone to explain to me why. Whereas in Terraria, it's like, oh, you, you can go fight the dungeon guardian and then you'll have access to the dungeon. And then in the dungeon, you can get stuff like bones to be able to make my other armor sites and stuff. You can get stuff, you can get your paintings down there, you can get a mechanic to help you get wires, so you can have like more advanced buildings or stuff to help you get around easier. And you can get traps that you can place at your house. It's like, that's just one place, and there's multiple reasons to go there. And even then, I think the dungeon's optional. For most of the game, it's optional. You can go down and fight Wall of Flesh first, and just go straight into hard mode, I believe. And then later down the line, even though the dungeon's something you can do far earlier in the game, you can just go ahead, like, I believe at the point you have to take on the dungeon is after Plantera? 
Actually, no, after you fight Blintera, it just says you hear stuff in the dungeon. No, no, I don't think it's Blintera. I think it's after you kill Gollum, you go to the top of the dungeon, and you can fight the cultists. I wonder if the actual dungeon itself is completely optional, actually. But even then, it doesn't matter if it's optional, because it provides incentive to do it through more than just one thing, like an elytra. Is dungeon optional, actually? Wait. I actually need to know now. This is, this is something. And there's nothing that says it is, so I'm assuming it's not. I don't know if it's needed for progression. I know... On the PC console, after a player defeats the Golem and Skeletron in the world. Okay. Okay, it's not optional. You have to, well, you have to defeat Skeletron, which means you don't need to go into the dungeon. You just have to have defeated Skeletron and the Golem, and then Cultist will spawn. And then you can do the Lunar Event. That's all. You don't have to kill Skeletron. Well, no, you don't have to go into the dungeon. You just have to kill Skeletron, and that's it. <laughs> that's awesome. That's so cool. But even then, there's incentive to go in throughout the game. Because you have the basic dungeon from pre-hard mode, then you have the hard mode dungeon, and then you have uh, post-Plantera dungeon, I think. Yep, yeah, yep, it is post Terra screens are echoing from the dungeon, and then you can get stuff like Ectoplasm. You can get Paladin's Hammer, which I believe is a melee weapon. It, which is excellent for people doing melee, because it's a th it's thrown. It might be ranged. Let me check. Nope, ranged melee. It's an extremely fast throwing weapon with a really, really good range, with high knockback. So there's incentive for them. There's also the Paladin Shield, which I think actually isn't that helpful. Because it, yeah, absorbs 25% of damage done to players on your team when your life is above 25% and grants immunity to knockback. So it's not very helpful, but it's fun. And then there's Wisp in a Bottle, which is an ally pet. Magnet Sphere, Morning Star, Armor Polish. Just like things that are helpful for every single class individually. You got Bone Feather to get yourself some Bone Wings, which aren't required, but are just there for looks. And you get the Spectre Staff, or Sniper Rifle, Rifle Scope, Shadow Jasting, got the Nazar. Inferno Fork, SWAT Helmet, Tactical Shotgun, Tabby, Black Belt, which are both great items from Bone Lee, Ectoplasm? Which you can use to make bars of that one, that one type of bar that I forget the name of that's Chlorophyte with that in the Auto Hammer. It is just, it's just too good. That's one area of the game. All accessible through one area of the game. All that stuff. There are more weapons in pre-hard mode dungeon than I think there are in Minecraft. I like, I'm just saying. I'm just saying. One game's cooler. You know? One of them is I like more. I probably never seen this sniper signal thing get on his knee before. That's that's cool. Makes sense. Like <laughs> Let me see here. I heard a bit of a sandbox building a terrain is better for adventure. That makes sense. Like, both of them have their things that make them good. Minecraft, you can build in 3D. Which is kind of important for building things. There's you, Things can only get so pretty in 2D. Which, not to say they can't look good. They can look absolutely immaculate. 
and it's also the and so yeah, it's having something being 2d there's a lower skill ceiling they both have like the same skill floor i would actually no no <sighs> minecraft skill floor and skill ceiling are higher for building than they are in terraria because there is you know an entirely brand new dimension in more ways than one i suppose to that game that terraria simply doesn't have like it has its merits it's just the one that i prefer is the one where i can do things well which is like a me personally i can't build well in minecraft you know people definitely can build well in minecraft Wow, we've been going so long that my non-copyright coffee house jazz, calm jazz music, relaxing music, relaxed music meditation ended. We're actually now in the second, we're actually now in one hour of aesthetic music, no copyright, which precedes one hour chill lo-fi hip hop, no copyright music. Meaning I've been going for a pretty dang long while. Just saying words. So I think as it is nearly 11 p.m. And my, you know, aforementioned coffee music is over. And I've done a good amount of ranting, and I'm kind of starting to slow down and just kind of complain about Minecraft now. Uh, I think I'm going to end it. And then hopefully there'll be a nice Terraria stream tomorrow with maybe some mods installed. You know, it'll be really fun. Look forward to seeing me mauled over trying to get some summoning equipment in the game, you know? Actually, don't look forward to it because I'm pretty sure it'll happen. Like, you know... High, high likelihood of it happening. I make zero promises to anybody, though, because I'd feel bad if I broke them. And so with that, I think I can just move straight on over to the end screen. Oh, where I can now actually go ahead and go back and pause my new music, because there's already a there's already a very helpful input here called lo-fi stuff that I'm using. And now, from here, I can say that it's over. And that there should be another game besides Ruina being streamed in the soon future, which I think will provide a nice breath of fresh air for me and everyone else. So until then, good night, good morning, good evening, good whenever.